I'm Sean. Check out ShootySchool.com for complete courses and hundreds of free tune track videos. Today we're in Ableton Live and we're going to take Tune Track's Easy Drummer 3 and route all of its mixer tab channels individually into Ableton so we can have complete control for mixing. So let's get started. I'm going to clean up my work area a little bit and just get rid of the tracks I don't need. Now we have one MIDI track, or you should create a MIDI track. And I'm gonna bring Easy Drummer 3 over to it. So I could drag it up here, or I could drag it down here. Easy Drummer 3 has 16 stereo outputs. By default, it only uses one of them, channels one and two, the left and the right ear. Everything, all the sounds you make, only come out channel one and two of Easy Drummer. as we can see in the meters here. But it has 16 stereo outputs available, so we want to utilize those other 15 stereo tracks. So in Ableton, let me just create 15 blank audio tracks. I'm going to hit Control T 15 times on Mac, hit Command T. One more. There we go. So now I have Easy Drummer 3 on a track and I have 15 audio tracks after it. So we're going to set up Ableton Live so it's ready to receive these tracks from Easy Drummer. We're going to do that first. So first thing I want to do is just color coordinate because if I have a big session up, I want all my drum tracks to be the same color. You could have hundreds of tracks in front of you, right? So I'm going to select my first track. I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to use my scroll wheel, get over to the last track, still holding shift, I'll select the last track. Now we can see they're all in the same color, they're all selected in a group right now. I'm just going to right click in the label area and color them all orange. So now at a glance, I can see all my orange tracks are drums. It's a beautiful thing. What else I want to do is I'm going to do another multiple channel selection, except I want to exclude our first Easy Drummer 3 track. So I'm going to select my first audio track, hold shift, select the last one. And I'm going to, this is kind of a shortcut to take care of some menu options we have to do. I don't want to do a menu option 16 different times. I want to select these 15 tracks and do it once. And under the audio from area, right here is an input type says external input. Select this. What we want to do is tell all of these tracks we want to accept signal from Easy Drummer 3. As we can see, Easy Drummer 3 is right here. Now when I select that, every single field will populate in the in input type menu. Here we go. 3, 2, 1. Great. Now I have 15 tracks ready to receive signal from Easy Drummer 3. There's one more step, and this is kind of monotonous. Pro Tools is the same way. Other DAWs are really automated with this. I'm going to deselect up here so I don't have a group of channels selected anymore. I'm just going to select my first audio track right here. And underneath that input type menu, which now says Easy Drummer 3, it says Post Mixer underneath it. This is the input channel. We want to select exactly which channel from Easy Drummer 3 that this audio channel receives. So if you select this, look, Easy Drummer 3 channels 3 and 4. Remember, Easy Drummer 3 channels 1 and 2, which is the default. That's coming out our Easy Drummer 3 track here. So here's Easy Drummer 1 and 2. We want our next channel to be Easy Drama 3 and 4, and so on and so forth. And this just takes a minute. So I'm going to do a little jump cut. But as you can see, I'm selecting the outputs from Easy Drama 3 in a chromatic manner. Now I have. 16 stereo tracks in front of me, and Easy Drummer 3 is capable of doing 16 channels out. So it's not working yet. And one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a shift select again on all my audio tracks. I'll select my first audio track. I should have done this earlier. Now I have all my audio tracks besides Easy Drummer selected. We want to change the monitor option. We can set it to auto 
or we can set it to in depending on your particular workflow. I'll just select in. And again, selecting all these tracks beforehand just makes it easier so I don't have to select this in button 15 times in a row. So now these channels were mute until we changed the monitor option. Ableton Live's totally ready to go and ready to receive from Easy Drummer 3. Now we gotta tell Easy Drummer 3 what to do. So I'll open it up. Let me go over to the Mixer tab. When we look at the Mixer tab, you'll notice at the bottom of every channel, there's a small drop-down menu. This is what channel each Mixer tab channel is coming out of. So there's 16 stereo channels. So let's grab the kick in microphone and select this. We can make this specific microphone come out any of the 16 stereo channels. It's pretty fantastic. So it's slightly limiting because depending on what library preset you choose, you could have a lot more than 16 tracks, so you have to combine some together and group some together, okay? Because you can't get past that 16 stereo track output limitation. And here's an example. So one quick way to route is to go to this mixer menu. Right now we're on stereo, even though there's no checkbox right here, we're on stereo because everything's coming out one and two, which is stereo. If we select that to multi-channel, watch these numbers automate and change. Three, two, one. The kick is still on one and two, but look, the snare, the top snare mic's going out three and four. The bottom snare's going out five and six, the hi-hat seven, eight. And more importantly, look at every single tom track. They're all grouped together, coming out of nine and ten. So we've actually successfully routed Easy Drama 3 already. Whether we like the routing or not, we're going to fix that in a minute. So let me hit play, and let's just take note that all these meters are jumping up and down. If I solo up channel one, which has Easy Drummer on it, there's our kick drum. Here's our uh, top snare mic, the bottom snare mic, and so on and so forth. And five and six isn't going off because there's no toms in this beat. So we successfully routed Easy Drama 3. Awesome. What if you don't like that routing? That's totally okay. You just got to spend a moment thinking about it. Let's open back up Easy Drama 3. Now, like I said, you could have a library preset selected that has more than 16 channels. So you have to stay to that number 16 or less, okay? I'm going to do a really rough idea off the top of my head. You do what you need for the project you have in front of me, in front of you. So I have three kick drum mics. I'm going to keep those on one and two. I think I can treat those at the same time, for example. And I feel the same way about the snare. I think I can treat the bottom snare and the top snare at the same time. So I'm going to change the, the bottom snare to go on to three, three and four with this top snare. I want the hi-hat to have its own channel and I want to be stay organized, so I'm going to move up chromatically. I want to change this to five and six. And now all these toms are grouped together, bust together, going out channels nine and 10. I don't want that. I want complete control over every single tom, so I'm going to give each one of these their own unique channel. So I'll start with seven, eight. Next one's nine, 10. Here's 11, 12, 13, 14. 15, 16, now all of my toms have their own isolated channel in Ableton, so I can really ring those out. Um, one thing I like to do if I'm not being picky, especially when I'm in a hurry, is I'll take the ride, the overheads, and the overhead mic, mono mic, and I'll combine them all in the same channel because they all share similar frequencies. Maybe I can treat those at the same time. So let me just go 17, 18 with these three. And uh, similar thinking, except with the ambience microphones, which are room mics, ambience, ambience, mono, and crunch, those could all be treated in the same way, possibly. So I'm going to put those on their same track. So starting with 19. And then down here at the end, now I don't use the percussion stuff and the mic that is for the percussion stuff often. So... What I don't want to do is leave them on one and two in case I add that stuff later. I don't want it coming out my kick drum track, which is also coming out one and two. 
So I might put these at the end of the line starting at 21 and 22, or if it's something you know you won't use and you want to eliminate the chance of it being heard, you could just select none instead and completely eliminate these. So even though we set up 16 full tracks in Ableton Live, it looks like I'm only using 10 of them. You know, and I could have pushed even more and utilized every, all 16 if I wanted. It's up to you. It's up to your production. So I have channels one and two all the way out to 1920. That's 10 stereo tracks. So I'm just going to clean up my session a little bit. Um, so here's my last one, two, three, four, five, six tracks. I'll just delete them. Now I have a custom routed session particular for my needs and I've deleted all unused tracks. I mean, my session's pretty sharp looking right now. And we're missing a lot of meters because there's no toms in this beat. Just grab a beat real quick. Here's a toms beat. Now, this is totally up to your preference. But if you're looking for a clean slate in Ableton, just you just want to kind of get Unity gain signals from Easy Drummer 3, and you want to reset your panning so you can do it all in Ableton, you might go over to the Mixer tab. And I believe you can just double click these faders and they will go up to Unity gain. For example, this ambience mic is negative 2 dB. I'll double click it. Now it's Unity gain. You know, so you could even out all your faders if you wanted. More importantly, so panning doesn't get confusing later when you're mixing in Ableton, is you might want to make all your mono tracks mono and make sure your stereo tracks are completely stereo. So my kicks are definitely mono, but look, this hi-hat is panned left. I'm going to double click it, center it. All my toms are panned particularly around the stereo spectrum, so I want to mono those up and so on and so forth. Here's a ride mic, and then I might make sure my stereo mic pairs are completely stereo 100 left 100 right now let's take a look in here now we're here in easy drama 3 more in mono because all the mono instruments aren't panned anymore and now you just pan them in ableton so here's my hi-hat you know and here's my tom so there's a typical tom panning right there so that's like a good blank slate you might want to be at. And I forgot to name these, but uh, now that we're organized, you know, you could right click on these names and name them if you wish. This is a snare, I believe, and so on and so forth. So what do you do here? Well, at this point, you would add your own third party effects to each individual channel. That is one of the huge freedoms you're getting here, you know? So let me just grab uh, an EQ, for example clear this and I'll throw an EQ on the kick drum. My kick drum is on this Easy Drummer 3 channel. I, I could have renamed it if I wanted. You know, maybe I'll do a quick high pass filter, for example. So you could EQ and compress all these different channels, saturate them, whatever your special sauce or what you're, you know, pursuing is. So after I kind of do a rough mix, rough pan, and do rough effects on these, what do people typically do? They typically take all of these tracks, in my case it's 10 tracks, and they send them to a bus channel. Why would you take all these tracks and send them yet to another channel? It kind of sounds confusing. Well, it really gives you a lot more power because if I send all these to its own bus channel, I can then mute it when I don't want to hear it in my full mix session, I can solo it if I want to concentrate it on, concentrate on it, but better than any of that is now I can treat the entire drum kit at once. I can turn it down, turn it up, or put effects on it all at once. So it's really fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create one more new track. Of course, it popped up over there. I'll put it at the end. Come on, buddy. Um, I'm going to rename this track. I'll call it Easy Bus. I'm going to make it orange, but not the same color of orange. So it's kind of in the same family, but I can see it pop out a little bit. And then what I want to do is I want to select all the tracks I want to go into this bus. So I'll select the first Easy Drummer 3 track, hold shift, select the last of the rest of the Easy Drummer tracks, and I'll go to the Audio 2 
menu. This is the output type menu. Right now it's going to the main, which is basically your master fader. I'm going to select this and I'm going to go to Easy Bus, which is the name of the bus channel I just made. So I'll go to Easy Bus. If I hit play, I won't hear anything yet. Nothing's broken. It's because we're not monitoring this channel yet. Now, the 10 Easy Drummer 3 tracks we have going here are all going to this bus. So I can mute them all and not hear Easy Drummer 3 anymore, which might be helpful if you're working on a really busy mix. You want to eliminate the drums temporarily. You could solo them, which is the opposite situation. You don't want to hear the rest of your session. You want to focus on drums. I can mix the levels. Now that my song's up and running, maybe I want quieter drums or louder drums. But most importantly is, when you get all these tracks back, going back through a bus, now I can treat the entire drum track at the same time. A lot of people use compression or saturation here to kind of glue the drums back together as a term they use. So we just do a lightning fast example of that. Let me do, just let me do like a waves plugin. I'll do the L2. That's a fast one. Slap this on my bus. You know, and now I'm compressing all my drums. Now I'm limiting all my drums. EQ, compress, whatever you want to do there. So that's absolutely fantastic. And a last note about this bus channel, in case a lot, most of us know what it is, but for those who don't, this is like a pit stop before the master fader. So all these 10 tracks do not go straight to this master fader anymore. All these 10 tracks go to this bus track first where you can control it before it goes to the master fader. So that's just another way to visualize it. So that's it. Um, we launched Easy Drummer 3. We set up all the Ableton tracks to receive any of those stereo output tracks from Easy Drummer 3. We did all the settings, you know, where we want to receive our audio from, exactly what channel from Easy Drummer 3. Um, then we kind of treated some stuff, throw some EQ on these individual tracks, named them, colored them, and then we shot them all over to a bus, and then we treated that bus. This is a fantastic example of how I work. Now, if you're just looking to print tracks, and not use your CPU power to work the way I work, like this. Um, there's one quick rule, one quick note if you want to print tracks, because if we go over here, if we just start recording right now, which by the way, let me select all these tracks, except for the bus track, now enable the record button. Now, if I hit record right now, it will print tracks that easy. We're printing tracks already. A lot of these tracks are Tom, so we're not seeing much signal. There's your snare, there's your hi-hat, and so on and so forth. So if you want to route out only to print tracks, here's one note is all these audio tracks will print, but Easy Drummer 3 is not on an audio track. It's on a MIDI, MIDI track, so that track will not print. So just a quick side note, if that's what you want to do is when you're on the mixer tab in Easy Drummer 3, avoid channel 1 and 2, because 1 and 2 is stuck to that MIDI track where you cannot print. That's all. So just avoid 1 and 2. I could start my kick on 3 and 4 and then work out numerically, you know, from there. So that's about all I have to say about that. And since I brought up printing tracks, I don't print tracks like this. This is a lot of work to print tracks. I would just keep my MIDI and Easy Drummer 3 and go to the track menu, and I would export song as audio files. And I would have the source program who's initially in charge of your audio to print the tracks for you instead of doing all this routing and, you know, exactly. And then I'd re-import those audio files. So, man, hopefully you are successfully routing Easy Drummer at this point, possibly even printing tracks at this point. And, you know, and if you're a beginner, you kind of have a, a more of an idea of signal flow and why you might want to use a bus. So I'm Sean from Shooty School. Check out shootyschool.com for complete courses and hundreds of free tune track videos. Rock on.